Did you know there are more of these Bubba. fucking things? I didn't, not until I got an additional 1500 comments telling me about a bunch of other things in the game that I wasn't even familiar with. So I compiled another list because you guys seem to really enjoy this kind of stuff still, even after two years after I uploaded the first video. So without wasting any time, let's hop right into it. The Little Bear itself is a separate cosmetic you can purchase for yourself, but its genuine variant has a fascinating piece of TF2 history behind it. The genuine Little Bear was awarded to players who purchased the 3A Toys Heavy Robot figure, and as far as I've searched from eBay to Etsy to Mercari to even out of desperation Facebook Marketplace, I'm sure even if you could sink a couple hundred bucks into landing one in your hands, it wouldn't even have a valid code to begin with. It's relatively safe to assume every single code has been used at this point, given the figurine hasn't been sold directly from retail in over seven years now. So new copies of this item are likely, literally, impossible to come by. These are still tradable, yes, and yes, some of them are still very, very expensive, but the origin of this series of items is something a lot of newer players have never seen or heard of before. Sometime between 2014 and 2016, Valve decided the addition of new festives with unique designs, wrappings, lights, bells, paints, and all that jazz wasn't worth the charm, effort, nor monstrous amount of cash they made on keys every year when they can just dump a festivizer you didn't ask for on you so you can apply these shitty, dangly piss lights to any weapon you want. Substance. But before Valve started to get lazy, every single Smithmas brought us two new crates, Naughty and Nice Crates. Nice Crates contained a series of Christmas-themed, non-seasonal cosmetics that were notorious for their exceptional quality every year, while the Naughty Crates gave out a much more expensive return. Festive weapons. Year 1 began with at least one stock for every class. Year 2 came out with some more creative choices, handpicking certain unlocks to not just put Christmas lights on, but really truly make Christmas themed. They were my favorite part of TF2 every year back in the day, and they've just stopped one day. It's too little too late nowadays to bring them back seasonally given the oversaturation of festivized items and their irreparable damage to the TF2 item economy, but at least you can still buy the old ones for an arm and a leg. On June 25th, 2012, Valve officially announced the Pyromania update, and promptly two days later, the update was launched alongside the 10th and final Meet the Team video, focused around the previously mysterious and completely unknown Pyro. The update was groundbreaking for its time, providing a whole new insight into the head of the mumbling arsonist, but few, even including those who saw the update themselves, knew of something interesting that happened just a week prior. On the 12th of the same month, over a week before the official release of the major update, a sort of ghost patch hit TF2, silently adding several mysterious treasures that pertained to an ARG that led up to the update before its official announcement. These items had some very unique properties over the next couple days. To date, they are the only TF2 items that have had hidden descriptions. On the 20th, just a day later, these items previously added had been updated with descriptions that could only be read if you equipped the Eliminating the Impossible set. These descriptions read, Think of the, the, witch, may go on, the hidden wickedness, may go on, year in, year out the deeds of hellish cruelty and none the wiser, in such places and Putting the seemingly random descriptions together in proper order would read out the following quotation. Think of the deeds of hellish cruelty, the hidden wickedness which may go on, year in, year out, in such places, and none the wiser which is a direct quotation from the Sherlock Holmes story, The Adventure of the Copper Beaches. It gets deeper, though. Over the course of the next few days, Reddit, Steam forums, and other communities alike would band together to put together the pieces of this ARG, in-game crafting error messages, hash strings found inside new records of the previously mentioned Eliminating the Impossible set, QR codes, an entire written-out US Senate hearing featuring Saxton Hale being accused of stealing resources and killing a monkey, no I'm not making that up, and finally came the 22nd of June, where a seemingly random blog post written by the pyro himself went live. Upon replacing the long strings of text with dashes and the shorter ones with dots, it would ultimately reveal a single-worded message in Morse code. Monday. The following Monday, the 25th, the update was officially announced. On the day of the update, however, five of the seven items completely incinerated and turned to ash. Up until July 11th, four of them could be combined to craft a pile of ash, which acted similarly to a crate. Upon using the item, you would receive either a scorched crate or one of the many new items introduced in Pyromania. Come the 11th, however, five of the seven items were removed from the game permanently whenever you booted TF2. Or did they? Interestingly enough to note, as of the Two Cities Man vs. Machine update, which happened over a year later, these items were no longer automatically removed from inventories, so a few of them still fly around every now and again. A nice souvenir to fondly look back on older days. 
This entry is less so for the item itself, and more so just to talk about the achievements that surround it. On May 5th, 2011, Valve pushed the Replay update, which introduced the now almost left entirely abandoned Replay feature, and started the annual Saxi Awards. This update brought eight new achievements, some of which, due to the Replay editor's continued functionality, are obtainable, but the other four that require a certain amount of YouTube views to be met as a criteria are no longer functional, as the API surrounding the Replay feature hasn't been updated in almost a decade. It's really interesting how little people talk about replays nowadays, and their history. The first Saxi Awards was compiled of exclusively replays, as SFM wouldn't be released publicly until a year later in 2012. And from there, nobody bothered making replays to submit anymore, as unfortunately, it was just extremely limited in what it could do compared to what SFM had to offer. It was interesting for the time, but 9 out of 10 times you'd realistically rather just open a .demo file and use that as a replay instead. If there's anything we know for sure Valve will never come back to, it's definitely this. So without any sort of external program or manipulation, the Frontline Field Recorder is no longer able to be acquired. Okay, that's it. I straight up don't think there's anything more noteworthy to talk about. Yes, there's really niche shit like fish cake, but you can still technically get that legit. There's old Halloween cosmetics, yada yada. Nothing that carries actual substantial conversation-worthy history. At least not to me. Sorry, guys. Thank you so, so much for watching, though. I greatly appreciate the continued support I've been getting on these videos over the past few months. I've been up to a lot in real life, and I've also started doing editing work for Lucky Luke. He's been collaborating with X-Tine for years to bring the top 10 TF2 plays of the month to the community, and we recently just put out two new videos for August and September of last year. I did most of the editing during the August edition, and Luke did all of September, so make sure to go check those out in the description below. Uh, another thing is, I'm going to start streaming on Twitch again pretty soon, playing TF2 both casually and competitively, so if you want to say hi, go take a peek, also linked below. And with that, I think that's all I've got to talk about today. I hope you all have a fantastic day, and I will see you guys next time.